Okay, good morning, good morning, Mission Teens Overseers and all friends. Remember the pleasure study. Remember the pleasure study. The one pleasure that you're not so aware of is that we're not in a persecution zone and we can do whatever we want to that benefits our souls and gives eternal rewards and benefits. Be aware, be aware of the goodies that benefit you. You are not in a persecution zone. Jesus' family in the friendship with God. When Jesus was a kid, Jesus' family had to have 10 men present in the family morning prayer. There's always women and children ready to pray. But you have to have 10 men present to start the morning prayer, which is the most important thing to just speak peace over the whole world and all those in authority that might come and mess with us. Let's shout for that. Let's shoot for that. <laughs> Let's shoot for 10 men. Jesus says only two or three are necessary, but let's do better. His original rule in his neighborhood was you got to have 10 men present to start the morning prayer. Can't begin that morning prayer until, until at least 10 men are present. And then later on he says, okay, when two or three are you, of you are gathered together, I am there with you perpetually. And he's talking about two or three family men and their entire families and a bunch of single people and elders and et cetera, et cetera. And that might, those mo words might not actually be in the scripture, but you have to put everything in context. And remember it's God's propensity. It's his glory to hide things. And it's the glory of noble souls to research and find things and bring it out to the family. So I'm bringing this out to you, to the family. Mission Teens Overseers, the most important thing of the day when people go home is them getting at least two or three brothers, believing brothers, men of peace, people of peace, family of peace, two or three brothers together with the kids and the women to admit their faults, and begin the morning prayer. Remember, Jesus says, if there's any junk in your heart, first deal with the junk, and then come to me with prayer. Okay, the most important family, the two most important family works of every day for friends of God from you. The two, the two most important family works are the morning prayer to bless, bless the world and to consistently admit faults before we go into God's presence. What are the two most important sacrifices of comforts? You could stay in bed, you could chill, you could etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What are the two most important sacrifices of comfort every day for those who desire the way of life, the narrow and difficult path? For those who want to be on the narrow and difficult path that leads to life, that gives eternal rewards and benefit. What are the two most important sacrifices of comfort? Okay, admitting your faults, admitting things that God's asking you to do that feel uncomfortable. The morning prayer and the admitting of faults, those are sacrifices of comfort. Some people can stay in bed, but some people got to rise up and say, come on, come on. We got to bless the world. Did we fix the world yet? All right. Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees. Do you know what the scribes and Pharisees are? And do you know what they did? Do you know what they, what their day-to-day -day life was? Your life is actually supposed to exceed that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, that's a big crazy warning. And that warning is in Matthew 5 at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. This is Jesus' big warning, letting everybody know, I'm about to give you instructions, and anybody that follows them will be greatest in the kingdom of God. Anybody that doesn't, 
There it is. John 5, verse 20. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments that he's about to give, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to break these commandments, those people will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. There's your eternal benefits and rewards right there. If you're not interested in working for eternal benefits and rewards, then you're listening to the wrong person. Because I'm focused on the invisible stuff. Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is a preparation for morning prayer. I'm just getting your minds right. Okay? What is the righteousness of the Pharisees? What did they do every day? They met in the morning and they didn't start to bless the world. I mean, remember, God says, I didn't pick you Israelites because you're good. I picked you because I'm good and I needed servants in this world to be an example to the wicked human family. And I picked you guys because your elders actually listened to me at special moments. So the job, we're, we're, we're dealing with the God of everybody and the God of everybody wants us to bless everybody every day. So that's how we start the morning prayer. We get a prayer shawl, and the men have the prayer shawls on their shoulders. The women have the prayer shawls over their heads. Not all the time, all day long, but when we come together and we come into the throne room, we are covering and and the men can cover their heads and sing the Shema remembering the former covenant Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Ha'echad Baruch Hashem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed Hear O Yisrael here, you people that wrestle with God, you people who interact with God and wrestle with God and ask God to do things and really believes and knows that God is an active lifeguard, you who wrestle with God, listen up. Our lifeguard and our strongest spirit is one multi-form spirit. One multi-form spirit. You should love your lifeguard and your strongest spirit with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And you should love and serve your neighbor in the same way that you love yourself. Those are the two greatest commandments. And all others fall underneath of those. That's the Shema. Then we move on. To the morning prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of Yehoshua Adonai, Prince of Peace. O God, the God of spirits and of all flesh. You who are beyond comparison, you who stand in need of nothing, you who have brought the sun to rule by day and moon and stars to rule by night, look down upon us with your eyes of grace and receive this our morning prayer, granting us your mercy. For we have not lifted up our hands to some strange God. Our hands are peaceable, our hearts are cleansed. We have renounced our sin and we have asked you again for forgiveness for those responsibilities that we have not taken care of. For it is written by James, if you know a thing that you could do and you don't do it, 
you are sinning. So we thank you for knowing and forgiving our omissive sins that we are not even aware of as we do our best to try to admit our faults as we know and understand them. You are the perfect God. And it is difficult to discern all of the things that we might be doing better. So we thank you for cleansing us and allowing us to come into your presence. You are the God of all spirits. You are beyond comparison. You stand in need of nothing. You have brought the sun to rule by day and the moon and stars to rule by night. Look down upon us with your eyes of grace and receive this our morning prayer, granting us your mercy. Receive this morning prayer. For we have not lifted up our hands to some strange or unknown God. There is no God but you, Yahweh Elohim, the God of the angels' of armies, the God of heaven and earth, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, the God who has sent Yeshua, Messiah, the resurrected one, the crucified. Having brought us through the length of the night and to the beginning of this day, preserve us and grant us, we beseech you, grant us the full anointing of your Holy Spirit, Grant us a sinless day and full obedience to the teachings of Yeshua, to the apostles that are the gospel and the way of life to be obedient to. Give us a sinless day. Give us an angel of peace by our sides, a peaceable way through this day. Give us a blameless trip and perfect choices throughout this day. Perfect choices, choices made with you and your Holy Spirit and not our agenda and our fleshly ways. When this life ends, may it end with the opening up of you receiving us. And may that life last forever through your anointed one, Yeshua. By Yeshua and the Holy Spirit, there is glory sent to you. There is love sent back to you. By Yeshua and the Holy Spirit, there is life and honor sent back to you, most, most Heavenly Father. We are sending love and peace back to you. You have given us buckets of love. We give you a little drop through Yeshua and the Holy Spirit. We give to you. Glory, glory, glory. We give back to you what you've given to us. Let us pray for the Ecclesia and the world. Let us pray for the gathered peoples, the people who are gathered in your name. Sunrise and sunset. Let us pray for the people who are gathered in your name. Remember, precious lifeguard, your amazing people, your amazing family gathering. Gather that gathering, the one that is holy and excellent and unusual. Gather that family gathering from the four winds into your kingdom family that you have prepared for her. Gather your family from the four winds into your kingdom family that you have prepared for her. Deliver your gathered people from all evil and make them perfect in your love. We call upon you, Yeshua, who gives gifts to the world, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of your teaching, and the gift of people, sent ones, truth speakers. 
anointed ones, ones that you have snatched out of the darkness and wrecked and reformed just like you did with Rav Shaul and the Twelve. You transformed people and you put your glory on them. They are not special. They were ordinary like us. But you choose the ordinary to shame the wise and the fancy. We call upon you, Yeshua, who is blessed and the provider of every blessing. To sanctify and purify all of the elders in your gatherings around the world. Yahweh, cause the elders of the gatherings to be in your ways, which are ways of discipline, and in all the teachings of Christ to the apostles that had been largely forgotten in many places through the wicked pride and greed of Satan. Restore the wisdom of Yeshua in all the elders around the world who call on your name and use the name Yeshua. We pray also for the the uh, the deacons, the the ones who are attending to the time of communion, which is the holy of holies of the new covenant, and our sacred gathering place behind closed doors, where we cleanse our hearts and admit our faults and do not go into God's presence, but first we purify, and we carry and care for one another in our troubles and discern and warn the spirits that are always trying to afflict and re-afflict us. Have mercy on the elders and give them the strength to teach wisely and help the people discern their own troubling spirits and be courageous in admitting their faults, to stay cleansed before God and before one another. Grant to your whole, all your gathered people, Yahweh, grant your rest, your contentment, and your peace on the inside, regardless of the evil on the outside, regardless of beatings and prison, regardless of sufferings and sadness, regardless of loneliness and separations. Give your rest and your contentment to your people. Give your mercy to your people, your propensity to care for those who don't deserve to be cared for. Give your great mercy to your church around the world and allow them to go and care for those who don't deserve to have mercy because none of us do. Grant to your whole church around the world your compassion, your tendency to care for other and not putting yourself first, giving away your best. You gave away your best, your own son. You put away from yourself your most wonderful treasure because you were caring for others. Grant your compassion to all of the gathered peoples around the world. Now we pray for the world and its peoples. As it is written, we lift holy and peaceable hands and hearts to pray for all those in authority so that those in authority might be peaceable towards us and the way that we live our lives for you, Yahweh Elohim. We pray for all those in authority so that they might be peaceable towards us. So we pray for the elder brothers and sisters and the parents and all the teachers around the world and all the community leaders around the world, regardless of what they're doing or leading, we ask for your mercy on them because they are in a position of parenting and guiding and they're setting an example. Have mercy on all those in authority. We pray for governors and sheriffs and community leaders of all sorts. 
We pray for presidents and kings and cabinets around the world. But most of all, we pray for the money people, the world power people that are dominating all of the governments and putting people secretly in slavery and submission to many things. We pray for all those in the highest authority. Father, cause them to do those things that brings Jesus back more swiftly because we say, Maranatha, Jesus, we want to serve you, but Maranatha, come back now. Maranatha, come back now. Father, do with all those in authority what you must do to bring Jesus back more swiftly. And we bless all those in authority. Now we pray for all those who have the power to punish. The army, the sheriffs, the police, the military, the judges, the courts, the juries, the decision-making peoples, and especially the jails and prisons and the jailers. Because those are the people that put people behind bars like animals and bring them up to execution and torture and death. We pray for the jails, the prisons, and the jailers right now in the name of Yeshua, that they might be peaceable towards us. Now we pray for all those who are sick. Thank you for healing my kidneys. Now we pray for all those who are spirit afflicted. And we are all spirit afflicted from time to time. And the men of the homes in the gatherings must know those familiar spirits that they still have in their atmospheres and cheerfully admit those areas where they are weak to the brothers so that they might carry one another and care for one another in one another's weaknesses. Remembering that the evil spirits that come to the men will actually afflict the women and trickle down to the children. The men are held responsible. And the men are the doorway either to righteousness or to evil. And if there are doors open in a man's heart to evil, may he have the courage to cheerfully declare the troubles and the afflictions that he has so he might receive care from the body of Christ. It is written, Paul said, God said, you don't get to be Jesus. You have an afflicted spirit. There is an evil spirit from the Lord for the good purpose of humility. And many foolish people do not understand an evil spirit from the Lord that remains, that must be discerned by the wise in order that humility may be kept. Basidekatada. We're praying for those in authority. We're praying for those who are spirit afflicted. Now we pray for those who are refugees, for the exiles, the ones that are driven out of their homes and their towns and homes are ruined. We pray for the exiles who are scared and have no place to go, suffering. Go to them, God, go to them. We're okay, we're comfortable. Now we pray for those who are in slavery, in ugly, bitter slaving work, generation after generation, in sweatshop slavery, making our devices locked down, having no freedom, slave laborers, especially in China and in India, slave laborers, making rich people's equipment. Now we pray for all those who are in prostitution slavery generation after generation, and those who are in slavery in hard labor in mines, down in the earth, breathing dust in the darkness, children who are dying prematurely because of the, the toxic dust inhalation, and those who slave with their hands to build bricks and break, break rocks every single day and are barely eating and starving, go to those who are in slavery. We are fine. Go to them. Go to them. Now we pray for all those in traveling difficulties in areas where there are wars and famines and no supply, where, where the 
vehicles are breaking down, overstuffed buses and trains, sinking boats, people trying to escape to places and, and drowning in the waters because of faulty boats. We pray for all those in traveling difficulties, in horrible circumstances. But most of all, we pray for those who are not yet friends with you. You made friends with us. Now go to them. Go to them. Make friends with them. You made friends with us. Go to the others. Go to those whose hearts are hard and broken and stiff and cold. That are not yet friends with you. Go to them. And the ones that have wandered out of your way of peace. When someone presented them with truth and they didn't want to follow it. And their heart got cold. Draw them back into the way of peace and truth. The narrow, difficult path. Bring them on that narrow, difficult path in obedience like a child to all the things of Yeshua. Please, go to those who don't know you. Go to the disobedient and bring them back. We pray all these things in the name of Yehoshua Adonai, Jesus, Messiah. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we love you, designer of the universe, the one who waits for us. This life is a little drop in the bucket, and our eternal life lasts for vast, unimaginable times. And you have eternal benefits and rewards waiting for us in line with those ways that we operate in faith and risk and push away the worries and the, the things of this world and walk with you. Give us the power to walk with you today. In the name